Good afternoon. My name is Elina Björklund. I'm a CEO of Reima and I came here. Thank you for the opportunity to come and tell Reima Go story. About Reima shortly. Reima was founded 1944 in Kankampä, in the middle of Finland, in the middle of nowhere. We started to produce wear, uh, outdoor wear from uh, army leftover snowsuits. And the brand DNA is still there. It's about durable, good quality clothing and very harsh weather conditions. Finland is laboratory for us. 2011, Reima was bought by Riverside, a US-based private equity company. And I studied as a CEO, we were given an assignment. Elina changed this company from product-oriented into consumer-driven international branded company. Not more or less than that for the team. And this is what we are still doing. We started to look around. How does the world look? Very obvious. Kids were already back then playing with their smartphones. Might happen, you might recognize from your, probably from neighbors' families, not happening in your families, but this <laughs> morning session here, everyone talking to each other. Very obvious already back in 2012, actually, that we were preparing the strategy for the company. Another thing happening around. Most likely these kids are going to play basketball, but their parents are taking care of them more than they should. The curling parents, as we know, us. So that the sweetie pies don't have to walk the 50 meters, they are taking by cycle. Bicycle, mother's bicycle, to play basketball. And the mother is most likely academic, metropolitan mother, measuring herself, very aware of health trend, trends, and then very worried that do these kids uh, move enough. As we all know as parents, the ultimate concern that we have is actually that how are my kids going to be as adults? How much should they be able to watch TV, play with their smartphones? Are they with the right people, right school? How are they going to get married and so forth? That is the ultimate consumer insight with all us as parents. And they were very worried about that. Do these kids move enough? What we saw happening in the distribution was, this, was that the... Mothers were buying Reima clothing, mostly in, uh, more and more in hypermarkets. So when buying your alter money, you also take one Reima over a snowsuit into, the, uh, into your bag and, and that's it. Reima's position was clearly towards or, or against wind and weather. At least my, my uh, child is warm and dry when I am working. So about good consciousness. But this was not very sexy position to say for French mothers or mothers in China to sell something against mud. So it was obvious that if we want to change this into an international company, we have to tweak the connotation of Reima a bit. So from sandbox to active lifestyles. Here you have fathers, suddenly fathers get interested in, I'm looking at Totte here, wallet is totally differently open. We talk about connotation to mountains, my kid is the hero, she, he or she has the best gear for slalom or be it outdoor living. We start to move the connotation towards clear blue skies when your child wears Reima, he or she is a happy child, he learns better, he has a better life. And then we bring a street savvy collection without, not all seams taped, but something that you can use everyday life. So a big brand positioning exercise ongoing still. We, we see first signs also happening in Finland that people see that we are changing. But definitely if you see Reima abroad today, we, the, the brand position is more active lifestyles than sandbox. And this was Relevant also in the sense that, as I said, that distribution was changing. 
Before we used to have specialty stores, mom and pop type of stores where clothing was sold. So we all went to, and we still go to a store to buy the clothing. But it was obvious already back then that now there is one type of stores that, is, that are taking the market share, and that is sports. Sport chains, when parents go to buy for themselves, they also buy for their kids. Another winning part is hypermarkets. When you go to buy this altar money, you also go buy, buy your snowsuit. And then, of course, digital. So that the specialty stores were disappearing. So the change in brand perception was more than needed. Back in 2012, we crystallized what we are about as a company and what we should do as we want to grow up. It's Rayma is all about kids growing up outdoors. We believe that active lifestyle makes happy, healthy children who also learn better. So basically, we, when we come to work, we put the kid in the middle and want to give every single kid in the world the best outdoor experience that you can imagine. And we believe, we want to believe inside the company that we have a meaning also making a bit better generation to come. We want to help us as parents to find a solution which takes so little time that you don't have to go. I myself know that when the first snow comes, I am the last mother in city market looking what is left for my kids. <laughs> And then I go with the grey snowsuit, what is left. No, yo, that is to come in the next strategic leg. We try to help these kind of parents how to, how to purchase easier. But let me go back to 2012. So we also crystallized what sometimes is needed in a company that what we are really the best at and what we are good at. It's of course, it's durable kids clothing, no matter whether it's windy, raining, We want kids to be active in any weather. We have the quality, the best baby overall. And then one very important thing that not many of us, I didn't know before I joined Reima, was that actually Reima has a technical DNA in the sense that company called Clothing Plus, which probably many of you know, was sold to Jabil last year. Uh, it's a spin-off from Reima in 2008. So the DNA for for uh, technical innovation was still in the company. And we crystallized that we believe that kids are made to move and we are there to help parents to realize this. We created a vision, a very bold vision, 2012, that we want to be the most preferred and the most profitable kids premium functional wear brand globally. Big words back then. The most preferred is probably the most important. We, it's about emotions. We're selling kids wear. And the most profitable, we wanted to say, instead of saying we want to be the biggest, because there are possibilities to take opportunistic le leaps in this industry, which can then lead to something that we did not, or we have said, and we still say that 72 years behind us, we want to be there for at least 72 years to go. So we have to take care of this company in a sense, uh, in a way that it's most profitable, so the cash flow is also there. Premium functional wear brand globally. We did the strategy that we are still following, needed um, to be international, we need a retail concept, we need a stronger spring-summer collection, uh, we want to be globally the active child's wardrobe between zero to 12 years. And then we also said back then that online is our home base. 2012, we started the digital transformation of the company, which we are in the middle. And I will now tell the Rayma Go story based on that. Houston, we had a problem. We were about to internationalize this company with no money, basically. 30 countries to conquer, very tight competition, as we all know, barrier to entry in this industry is pretty low. And really marketing resources. How do you do this equation? 
started to think around that and think that, okay, if we can't buy the media, we have to earn it. To earn a media attention with the boys' jacket that this year is navy. <laughs> Or a girl's nose would be pink. It's a bit difficult. We, of course, knew that we have the story to tell. 72 years we've been there for trying to get kids out, no matter what the weather. Today, probably more relevant than it's been ever. But it was not enough. We started to concept around this idea, as I showed to you. Kids playing with their smartphones, parents worried about, are their kids enough out and active? We had the distribution moving to sports. We have to change our connotation from sandbox to mountains to active lifestyles. And then we have this technology background. So what is more natural than to come up with wearable technology? 2014 spring, we decided with the leadership team that we are to bring the wearable technology or intelligence into Rayma clothing in autumn, winter 2016. And as the first company or first kidswear producer, we pro produced with the Suunto, the world's first activity sensor that I have here as well. It's very good for parents as well, which we have brought to the market. It's been now launched in um, uh, Finland, uh, Scandinavia, all Scandinavian countries, Russia, Czech, Germany, Switzerland, actually today in UK, Covent Garden, Snow, Snow and Rock, is launching uh, Raymago, and the PR launch continues until uh, January 2017 in uh, Beijing and Shanghai. We are bringing Raymago in Mandarin words. So this activity sensor is meant to activate, to encourage kids to be more active, to bring more family time, There will be double points when family goes out together. You can follow your kids' activity, even if father is traveling in Shanghai in a hotel. He can check, send a thumbs up for the kid, for the activity. And actually what we learned, we have tested the concept with consumers, a lot with consumers, different kind of tests. We learned that actually kids are also very interested about activity that they do. My kids uh, went uh, to garden to work with their dad, came home, we uh, synchronized their points, and actually what they saw is that they got points, activity points from working in the garden. Mom, is this sports? No, it's not sports, it's hyödyliikunta, as we say in Finnish. So it's the most healthy way to get your points. But let me show first what Reima Go is about.
a lot of publicity that we have earned with this. And we are in the first steps of the journey. I know we will be smiling in two years' time because of this is so big. We already feel it's a bit big, but we sell it as a safety argument that kids don't swallow it. But it's a, a very good technology proven by, by Soont. We see that this works and the consumer feedback that we get back is very good. And for us, it's a platform to get closer through digital to our consumers' lives, to learn more, learn more about kids. We can start to compare kids in China, how much they uh, play out compared to kids in Finland or Sweden, even Turku can compete against Helsinki, what happens and, and so forth. So we know that we are on the first steps of our journey. Thank you.